I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about this number. It's, um, it relates much to uh, the remarks that were made by the previous uh, speakers. Um, it's really a scary number uh, on the one hand, but it's quite sobering on the other hand. This would be the type of uh, number you need, operations per second you need, to compute the human brain activity. We're not there yet, of course, so I'm wondering if we should start talking more about augmented intelligence versus artificial intelligence. That's also uh, at least my personal opinion. I just want to quote uh, Andrew Neng on this. Andrew is uh, head of AI at Baidu, at Baidu rather, and he says, less hype, more progress, and I kind of like that one. So let's talk about um, augmented intelligence. Let's talk about what needs to be done to, uh, to simulate, uh, simulate uh, um, intelligence in the short run. As you see, um, aside from uh, what it takes for a human to reach a conscious level, um, we see, and, and, and also this was said yesterday by Ms. Mosa, who is uh, at IBM, uh, we see uh, lots of approaches uh, towards natural language understanding that uh, are related to um, uh, pattern recognition. We see companies like Facebook and Google uh, primarily using um, or relying heavily on pattern recognition, uh, neural networks, deep learning, and as the gentleman said from PwC uh, early on um, during the session, uh, using lots, of, lots and lots of training data, which obviously can be found on Facebook and Google and so forth, in the commodity space to reach, let's call them early emerging results in this field. Uh, I think our company, Mia, is solving a different problem. We're solving the problem there where governments, and we had one of the speakers yesterday here, one of the uh, you know, governments, uh, lots of uh, enterprises are dealing with huge amounts of uh, complex uh, data, uh, complex data across industries, across uh, language. And the question is, how do you solve the understanding piece if you don't have the training data, if you don't have the labeled data? I would say this is exactly what Mia uh, has been working on the last couple of years. And uh, we basically uh, came up with, um, let's see, yeah. We basically came up with uh, what we call a non-biological AI approach, meaning that we don't, from a kernel perspective, we don't rely on neural networks, but we rather um, experiment or uh, uh, tried experimenting a few years ago with uh, a couple of hybrid approaches with successful results. Um, we combine linguistic and uh, semantic uh, models um, to look at uh, text from a language uh, dependent uh, view. I'd say uh, the concern that Ms. Atkins had a couple of uh, uh, speeches ago was, can we really rely on natural, lang natural language processing knowing that uh, these uh, vendors or these uh, technology approaches tend to rely only on these uh, two blocks. I would say I share her concern, we should not. That's why we try to figure out what would it take to go from processing natural language to actually understanding it. And I think we managed to close a little bit of that gap. Not there yet, but we managed to close a little bit. Why? Because we understand that if you would combine linguistics and semantics and you don't attempt to extract the underlying concepts in language, which are by definition language independent, you will not get there. Meaning if you use concept, model, uh, concept models, which basically are semantic brains uh, tailored towards specific vertical industries, uh, you, know, you already take one step in the right direction. But notoriously building these uh, elaborated ontologies of, or concept nets as we call them is A, very expensive and B, it will take you an army of computational linguists to do so. So how we, do we do that? And that's, uh, I, would, I would say, the hybrid uh, approach here. We use um, unsupervised machine learning. That's important. We, we don't rely on trained, on labeled or, or a set of labeled data or training models, but we use unsupervised machine learning to build these concept nets automatically. 
Now, how would this work in, uh, in a few practical applications, a few use cases? Uh, because if it doesn't really solve any problems, it's preaching in the desert. Somebody actually needs to use it and uh, make sure that he or she or the company uh, finds added value into it. Uh, I'm just going to show you two uh, short uh, demos. Uh, one of the, the demos I want to uh, quickly start off with is uh, we did a project, or we were approached by a, a certain technology federation. They have about three, four, five thousand members uh, in their uh, uh, database, and they they all seem to be coping with the same type of problem. Being, uh, they had a really terrible time in subscribing to uh, what they what they call public tenders. Uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, we needed to solve two problems because these companies needed to manually profile their company with a set of keywords that they thought would be making sense on the other side, of course, at the uh, output side, first of all. And then second, how would you cross the language barrier? Because if you're a company in Belgium or in China or in Germany, you would use Dutch or German or Chinese keywords. So how would that relate um, to tenders that are being published in different languages? So instead of having the company manually profile it, we just scan the internet, in this case an internet a website of a company. We uh, determine from a linguistic and semantic point of view what is noise, what is not. And we map uh, these pieces of text on what we call a language independent uh, concept net. So the engine uh, will uh, figure out the, um, uh, the concepts, will map it on, uh, on this concept net. And we'll use the same methodology on the, on the other side, meaning that we can uh, produce a cross-language uh, conceptually matching um, a methodology to solve that problem. And it's being used already. Um, and we just took a look at the, the, uh, the results. And if, uh, if you would have uh, a few human consultants uh, do this job via keywords, let's say you would come up with a list 100% of uh, keyword hits, which is basically what it's going to be. With a little bit of guesswork, it's not going to be anything uh, more uh, than that. Uh, we reduced that amount from 100 to 5%, being the 3% that a human consultant uh, figured out after he filtered or, or dived uh, down the list, and the 2% that he missed. So I would, I would say this is a perfect example of how we can augment human ability without actually having to replace it. So I think that's, uh, that's quite an interesting uh, example. A few key advantages before I do a live demo, which is the scary part, um, but okay. Um, key advantage, uh, the system works uh, language uh, and uh, domain independent, meaning that uh, it would only take us, I would say, two to three months with a team of three people to come up with a language model and a new domain from scratch. So that's quite fast. Uh, it has cross-language performance without using machine translation because the concept net itself works as an interlingua uh, to power the application. So that's, that's quite uh, new. It's self-learning. Uh, the more data we get to crunch from the customer, the better it gets. We teach the system to understand what it cannot understand, meaning uh, it has a high, um, a high learning level there. It's quite scalable. We don't need... Uh, supercomputers to power this. It only takes us a few uh, Amazon Web Services invoices a month to be able to uh, uh, finance this. And the whole business model is scaled around or constructed around the API. So we believe that that is definitely uh, the future. Um, um, this is um, a project that we've done together with a customer uh, for the European Court of Human Rights. It's uh, in Strasbourg, in uh, France. Um, quickly sketching the problem over there, there's about, I would say, 100 to 150,000 lawyers on a yearly basis that consult that database. It contains about 50,000 uh, cases. Um, I would say 40% is in English, 40% is in French. The rest is in about 10 to 15 other languages. So that's a problem. Uh, Think about 50,000 cases, 200 paragraphs per case, um, and about 10, uh, and you add 10 to that, so we're looking at about between 1 million and 10 million paragraphs that need to be queried. If you query that uh, with uh, plain um, uh, keywords, even extended keyword search, even adding a little bit of fuzzy logic, uh, it will 
you'll have a, a, a quite a bit of a struggle to, uh, uh, to get uh, relevant results. Uh, moreover, what if you had this question? What if you're a lawyer looking for a case where you know it's in there, it's in the database, it's about a priest that was fired uh, from a school after he got married? How would you solve that with keywords? Uh, what we do basically is we have the engine figure out what the concepts are in that query, and we do the same thing on the other side. We, let's call it a, a semantically index um, uh, the database, whether it's cases from European Court of Human Rights or whether it's publicly available uh, law for any type of uh, government, the methodology stays the same, uh, or whether it's private files from, uh, from uh, law offices. What we get you is a, a, you know, a, a conceptual uh, representation on a query side and on the output side, and we get you an answer to your question versus a list of uh, keyword hits. Um, this is already in production. Um, this is live for lawyers in uh, France. Um, we tend to stay away from front end, meaning that we're back end uh, guys, we're back end, we love our back end. Um, uh, this is opening up our API to a, 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 our customer called the Lia Port. They have an interesting model. They, they just throw it on the market for free. They say, just use it. And uh, we're, together, we're looking to expand not only to governments, uh, but also similar courts and uh, um, I, I'd say uh, private files uh, in, in specific uh, uh, law firms. Um, we have a couple of uh, beta projects uh, running in customer relationship management, in uh, insurance, and we have a couple of prototypes uh, in, uh, in a few other domains.